we want to go to space, you know, like we want to, we're going to shoot high, we're going to get there, we're going to go outer space, it's going to be amazing. And they're like, oh, oh yeah, go for it, you should do it, everyone should be working towards this, it's going to cost us $300,000. And they're like, great, here's seven. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine, when you're not really fine. Today I had the pleasure of speaking with Oleg Kolomanov and Nathan McDonald. They are the Chief Rocketry Designer and Chief Safety Officer at a student rocketry group called Space Concordia. Over the past year, Space Concordia has developed the most powerful rocket engine ever developed by students. So let's take a look at what it takes to build a rocket engine. When we started this project, we asked, like we had just come home, we, had, we were the first international, like we were the first engineering team that had ever brought home a uh, first place trophy to Concordia University, you know, international. Like there was a lot of other like teams that had done so like in Canada, we'd always been well represented. Like we always go out, we punch above our weight, we always like do well. And there was like some engineering competitions there, but to go out to like an international competition with like hundreds of universities from around the world and bring home two first place trophies. It was, uh, there was people who were ecstatic, you know, super excited. Everyone's like, oh my God, these guys can do anything. And then we were like, we want to go to space. You know, like we want to, we're going to shoot high, we're going to get there, we're going to go outer space. It's going to be amazing. And they're like, oh, oh yeah, go for it. You should do it. Everyone should be working towards this. Woohoo. And we're like, okay, it's going to cost. And we were like low ball. Like I, I thought we were exaggerating, but in reality, we were low balling. And I was like, it's going to cost us $300,000. And they're like, great. Here's seven. <laughs> $7,000. We had to raise every single penny ourselves. Like, uh, we just go door to door, like knock and be like, hey, have you heard of Space Concordia? Like, we're this team, it's blah, 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 blah. And like, have you ever heard of Concordia University? You know, people have maybe heard of like U of T or like McGill or whoever, but no one's ever heard of Concordia. Like, it's a really small, it's like an arts college, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> at least the you know the project is cool and it kind of sells itself you know like uh but uh it's 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 tough so many of our problems would be gone if we just had money but we don't like every decision every design decision we've made has been because of cost you know every the entire rocket is actually designed to be possible on our, under our budget like the entire test stand there's so many compromises that are made you have no idea like it's not like yes there's a lot of smart decisions in there but and in, but in some ways it's actually better in my opinion like uh yes it would be easier if everything was like filament over wrap you know like copv and like oh we just outsourced everything to like the machinist and oh and we just bought our pre-made combustion chamber from like a company in the us and oh we just like paid for helium and whatever but the thing is like Money doesn't fix stupid, you know what I mean? It's like, it would you it would make you, like, you wouldn't learn, you know? You would be like, you'd pay a bunch and then get the thing and be like, oh, it doesn't fit. And then be really shitty at, like, making modifications to make it fit. But if you're making the, if you have to make the part with your own two hands yourself, and you don't have the machines to properly do it, it forces you to think, forces you to be like, how can we do this? You know, like we couldn't afford, like when we had, when we were building Trailer Tom, we couldn't afford to make tanks that had like the capacity we needed and that can handle the pressures we wanted to work at. So we had to think like extremely creatively and so much so that like the bottleneck for all of the Canadian rocket startups is amazing, was their tanks. To make their test tanks, they had to pay like hundreds of thousands of dollars for like custom welders to like actually roll and weld stainless steel, like whatever, to make a, like a large volume, large pressure tank. And we figured out a workaround that instead of paying hundreds of thousands of dollars, we actually only have to pay a couple thousand dollars, you know? And it like cracks the code. And we actually kind of shared the secrets with a couple key companies. And now that's what everybody's doing now. It's kind of, and we were the ones who figured that out. Everyone was stuck for like three years and then we figured out the code and then, you know, kind of move forward. And it just, that's the thing. It's like, it forces you to think in a certain way to, and to really understand the problem like really well. And uh, in some ways that's an advantage. In a lot of ways that's an advantage because it forces you to be resourceful. Like when COVID happened, like we're still used to suffering. 
we're so used to everything being so difficult. I'm, I'm serious. When everything is so difficult, right? When hard things happen, you don't, you're like, whatever. Like, it's fine. This is just Tuesday. Like, <laughs> let's just keep going, you know? Like, man, in Quebec, I don't know how things are in Germany, but in Quebec, there's like a government mandated curfew. We're not allowed outside, like past 7 p.m., about uh, past 10 p.m. And earlier, like last year, it was 8, you know? And when the school locked down, like we weren't allowed in the school. So like, how did we work? We actually like moved, like the team went into the school, said we forgot our lunch in a locker and fucking stole every, all of our stuff. We took every nut, bolt, washer, like screw, everything was just excavated from the school in like an eight hour period, super effectively loaded up into the back of a rental and drove out to like an abandoned house that one of our team members had inherited in Sherbrooke in like a small town, like an hour drive away from Montreal. And we lived in, like we, we, we fixed up this house. We got the electricity working, we got the water working. We renovated the place to make it like livable. And like, we just turned it into the rocket house. And we lived there for a year, just like the team working on the rocket, you know, like nonstop throughout the entire pandemic, you know? We got internet, we were doing our classes, classes in the, in the house. And it was the rocket house and it was like a year of you like we would just just never give up never surrender just keep going like when i joined the project i wasn't like as iron willed as oleg is right now um and but the thing is like being in an environment with a bunch of people who are all just like like okay we got to do it we got to do it let's do it right really like gets other people to be like okay that's the way we do things okay and then so it's also like it, it that's i think why the team works so well is because it, we all sort of help each other and inspire each other to like d let's do the thing right like and it's like oh that's really hard but it's like, like let's we can do it and just watching other people work so hard really makes you want to work just as hard life is hard all right rockets are hard everything's hard all right the only thing that makes a difference is you like Get, like give the only failure is giving up that's it that's all it is if you like the you're only you can only really say that you that something is stopped or is is not working if you stop if you stop it's a choice it's a failure is a choice you know there's always a way like there's always a way around you know there's always another avenue you can think of you just and it's hard it's hard it's but it's a matter like once you can accept that kind of responsibility that it's actually just a choice like you can do the easy thing or you can do like the hard thing or the right thing and just keep like okay we can't do it this way there is a way oh it's gonna be oh but we'd have to do this we have to clear the way and we can do it you know so just has to just has to be that so it's like this kind of iron steadfast resolve that's kind of really made everything that we do possible it's just never giving up and a lot of people now especially nowadays aren't used to that you know like how do you fucking you think people landed on the moon in the 60s without a fucking computer or a cnc machine like that was hard that was really hard but like you just can't it's like oh how are we gonna do this we don't even like how are you you can't simulate you can't there's no fucking calculator dude but they still built the thing that like they fucking controlled five huge ass goddamn rocket engines to like fly up like uh, uh, using analog and like air pressures and stuff like dude for Forget about it. Like everything in that rocket was handmade. Think about it. Everything was handmade. Like there was no machine, there was no calculators, no everything. And it still worked. Like it was hard. It was hard, but they did it anyway. It's okay that it's difficult. 